that is environmental art. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a very famous artist who is known for doing his artwork outside exclusively using only natural materials and then once he's completed the artwork he leaves it to mother nature to do what she will with it. So I'll show you, show you some pictures of that in just a minute. In the meantime we are going to go for a little walk and look around to see what's out there that we can create our own environmental art with. I'm going to show you two different examples of how you can do it and it's going to include some of the things that we've already learned about the elements of art. Y'all remember those, don't you? Remember it starts with a line and then we have a shape and then we have a form. Sounds familiar? Um, this time though we won't be using the element of form very much. Most of these are one or two dimensional, not three dimensional because most of the things that we're using are rather flat. Meet Andrew Goldsworthy. He was born in England and is considered one of the world's foremost environmental sculptors. He's also a renowned photographer. He does site-specific sculptures and land art using rocks by stacking them, balancing them, and shaping them. He also does his environmental art using leaves and many times features black holes. Leaves of different colors that he will also cut out and use different shapes. Notice again the black hole, this time with white. He uses sticks, rocks, and stones and many times does his environmental sculptures out of ice and icicles and snow. He is famous for shapes like snakes, graphic designs, and circles, like mandalas, something that radiates with a radial formation. Notice the really bright colors. All right, let's see what we can do on our own. Remember that Andy Goldsworthy really liked very bright colored things to use in his environmental art. So I have some of this Creeping Jenny that is a very, very bright green, and I'm just going to pull off a little sprig or two and it's not like what I'm pulling here is going to make much of a difference in um, damaging my landscape please be careful of what you're taking from your landscape or maybe around your neighborhood because some of your parents or your neighbors may not appreciate you taking those things um, but if you can pinch off just a few little things and separate them then that would be okay these are begonias and I'm going to pinch off just a couple of the flower heads. That's not going to be missed. And that's not going to be missed. You can walk around, keep these things in your hands just like this or in a baggie again. And we're going to make something really cool with it. Um, I'm going to go over here and get some of these leaves here. This is a Nandina. They are very long leaves. And that will add some interesting texture. I'm going to need a few. And since I need to shape up this plant anyway. It doesn't matter that I'm pulling them off. Alrighty, let me look around my yard and see what else is out here. This is a holly bush and it looks completely different from the Nandina. So I might pull some of those as well. I spy with my little eye a bunch of weeds. But you know what? These weeds could be a good thing. So I'm going to take some of these flowers here. I'm just going to grab the whole plant. What? There's a bunch of rocks around here that are smaller, and I could pick some of those up and maybe use those in my design as well. So don't think that rocks aren't a good thing to have in your design because they would be great. That's a good shape one. That's a little shale. That's concrete. So I'm going to go with natural, and that's all shale. Don't forget your rocks. The thing I can use are some sticks. And these are all kind of curling off to the side. I can break those down just like Andy did. Alrighty, just like Andy Goldsworthy would really study the landscape and decide where he would like to do his artwork, I'm going to choose to do mine at the very end of my driveway. And that's because I have a lot of neighbors that are out and about now under quarantine and they're walking and they're riding bikes. And I think if you leave a surprise 
like a little piece of art at the end of your driveway for others to see and smile and chuckle over, that's a wonderful gift to give to other people. So I'm going to sit here with my stash of rocks and twigs, weeds, leaves, um, some petals here, and come up with some kind of a design. I think the easiest one to start thinking about would be a radial design. I know that you all remember what radial balance means, that everything spins off of a center point where it's round in design. You could choose to think of the, um, the face of a clock and have 12 different segments, or you can divide that in half and have six different segments. I think I'm gonna try six. I'm gonna play with this for a second and then turn off the camera so that you can see. I'm gonna start with the sticks. All right, now I've added some long, skinny, dark green leaves and bringing that to the center. All right, now I've added my little pieces of shale rock. Notice how most of them are about the same size so that there's a nice balance here. I think I'm gonna do most of my darker things and then add in the color. What's up next? Maybe the pink petals. Okay, keep working on my design here. I don't know how well you can see it, but I've added some petals. I've decided that doing this on a breezy day is not a good idea if you're using leaves and petals and things that will blow away in the wind. Even those sticks can be picked up and blown away. So you might decide to go with a larger scale project using more rock or twigs or logs, something that if you have a backyard that's got a lot of that in there, you could decide to do something very, very different. Notice that I don't have an implied center. They're all just pointing to something, but I surely could find something else to put in there to draw attention to that. All right, here's the finished product. I found a rock in my neighbor's yard. I went and borrowed it from him, and I might give it back to him. And then again, we may just paint rocks. So I might have to steal it and then leave it back on its doorstep as a surprise. So here is my Andy Goldsworthy inspired environmental art. I did a radial design and I used some things that I found in nature like twigs, long grass pieces, weeds. I pulled some leaves off of plants that weren't going to distract from the shape of the plant. It's a good idea to ask your parents what you could use. Let's take a look. If your family goes on a nature hike, like maybe up to one of our wonderful parks, as long as you're not around other people, if they consider that being a safe thing to do, you could do this so easily. And you could teach your family a little bit about radial design. But remember, it does not have to be radial design. It could be anything that inspires you when you look at the environmental art of British artist Andy Goldsworthy. Can't wait to see what you come up with.